morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Shall we all stand as we sing? I will bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name.
fundamental belief number three. God, the eternal father, is the creator, source, sustainer, and sovereign of all creation. He is just and holy, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. The qualities and powers exhibited in the Son and the Holy Spirit are also revelations of the Father. You may be seated. Father, we have come into your presence once more. We thank you for this holy Sabbath day of rest. We pray that you would bless your people today. And, oh God, we pray that your anointing will be upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. Oh, wow. Um, I know you could do better than that. Good morning, Flatbush. Happy Sabbath. I am Sister Lystra Harry, Brooklyn, Staten Island, coordinator for Women's Ministries Department. I want to thank you for coming out today. Our women are special. Amen. Our women do a lot. Our women carry a lot. Our women carry a men. Amen, Amen men. <laughs> there are a lot of churches here today, and I just want to say, um, let us see all the ladies from Flatbush stand. All the ladies from Flatbush Church. Amen. Amen. Now, Flatbush, sit. All the ladies who are not from Flatbush, could you please stand? Okay. Thank you for coming. On behalf of BSI, on behalf of NEC, on behalf of all the women, I want to say to you, welcome. So we're going to join now. We have a thing at my church where we don't just say welcome. We sing something. All right? So we're going to sing, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know that one, eh? Okay, after three. Two, three. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill our temple. Holy now I want to see you do something different. You go sing it again, and I want you to shake somebody's hand. Two, three. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill our temple. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Once again. On the behalf of BSI, welcome to Flatbush. Welcome to a Women's Empowerment Day. May God richly bless you. Sister Kathy Ann. Well, good morning again, Flatbush Church. My name is Kathy Ann, and I'm very pleased to be here with you and also to stand here giving you a double welcome. Well, this welcome, I want to greet you on behalf of Northeastern Conference, but specifically the Women's Ministries Department of Northeastern Conference, where our director is Pastor Donick Blake, and myself, along with Pastor Amanda Hawley, are the assistant directors. Now, hold on a second, because I've got to ask Lystra a question. Lystra, is there any reason why every woman in this room, every woman in Flatbush Church should not be a part of women's ministry? Absolutely not. Thank if you're you. not involved in women's ministry, 
get involved. Absolutely. And here's why. Because we've created this inclusive ministry, right? It goes from children from the ages of 10 to adulthood. We have three programs. We have a GEMS program for all of your, the young people between the ages of 10 through 19. That program is designed specifically for them. Then we have a, a, another program called Power. Power is for ladies between the ages of 20 to 39. If, they're, if you're 40, they cut you out of that one. They said because there's another group, it's called Word. That's women of rare distinction. And that's for women ages 40 plus. So there's so many things that you can get involved in. But I also want to, I don't think I'd be a good director if I didn't stand here and tell you some of the things that are also coming up in women's ministry. I want you to know that we stand with a global initiative called End It Now, and we have several End It Now awareness campaigns to stop violence against women and people all around the world. Our next campaign is coming up May 26th to 27th, so please look out for that. If you're not um, checking our website, necwomensministries.org, you're missing out on some things. If you're not on um, checking out our Facebook page and our uh, Instagram page, you're missing out on a lot. So make sure that you go and you subscribe to those pages. I also want to share with you that every, th this is still the welcome, by the way, every Thursday at 5 a.m., women of Northeastern and around the world gather together just for prayer. If we're living in this, these times, you understand how important prayer is. And so every morning at 5 a.m., they meet together to pray. And won't you join us? Um, also on May, March 18th at 5 p.m., we're inviting you to join the talk. We're celebrating Women's History Month. And the talk is about contemporary 21st century social justice issues. That's a talk that's going to happen on Zoom at 5 p.m. on March 18th. And finally, the last thing that I want to tell you, there are also great treats when you're with women's ministry. And if you are part of women's ministry, you would know that on October 26th to 29th of 2023, we have partnered together with the West Jamaica Conference. And if you're not a part, we're going to go. But we are all going to Jamaica, October 26th through the 29th. And we're partnering with the women's ministries and we're bringing you an empowerment retreat that you can't afford to miss. Women, Lister was saying, you, we wear so many hats. It's time to take off all of those hats and let's go lift up the name of Jesus in Jamaica in October. So see you guys there. And we continue this exciting welcome. My job is to continue the announcement. Your job is to listen. And I pray that your job will finish before my job. Um, with that said, we would like to welcome Sister Donette, Dr. Donette Blake, um, leader of the Women's Ministry from the Northeastern Conference. Can you please stand so we can give you a Flatbush welcome? Amen, 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 amen. And with that said, the local announcement. The youth ministry would like to remind that there is an adventure meeting today at um, 4 p.m. and after which there will be a parent meeting. The um, Pathfinders Club will have their meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. and they're asking for you to continue to pray for them as they uh, minister with the Bible experience in Connecticut today. And we are a church that believes that we need to rightly, rightly divide the word of truth. So every Sabbath with our shepherd, Dr. Michael Harvey, 3 o'clock, everyone is invited. Even if you're online, you can come and join us at 3 o'clock for the Bible celebration, Bible worship, Bible class, and to be edified in the correct way. Um, 4.30, we have... Our AY and the AVI this week is whatever, what, what every young person needs to know about the church finance. So please come and be part of that. Um, Global Youth Day is March 18th, and the youth are going to be distributing some items, and they're asking for your assistance with the following items. Fluffy warm socks, boxes of tissues, and also you can give cash donations. The cash donations is going to, you can utilize the same method you use for your tithes and offering, and that is on the screen. They're asking that all items be here in the lobby no later than Friday. 
And we are a church that believe in prayer. Prayer is the key that unlocks the God's storehouse. So every Wednesday, we have our Wednesday fellowship, 7.30 p.m. Every Sunday, every Sunday at 6 p.m. Please note there's a change. The 7 o'clock on Wednesday has been adjusted, so it's 7.30 and 6 p.m. on Sunday. On a different note, we would like to continue to give our condolences to the, um, the Francis family. Sister Francis, the former Flatbush principal and friend, um, will be funeralized tomorrow at Gosham Seventh-day Adventist Church. The viewing is from 1 to 3, and service follows immediately after. Please continue to keep this family in prayer. And we have the discipleship program which is today from 4 to 6.30. It's going to be on Zoom. Please avail yourself to that. And i just like to remind everyone that the King of Kings is here. Like the woman in, with the issue of blood, just reach out and touch his hem, and you too can be healed. Happy Sabbath. Thank you very much. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We join in extending a very warm and cordial Flatbush welcome. Welcome not only to those in the immediate space, but for those who have made Flatbush their place of worship by choice. We know you have options, but you thought of us that this is the best location in the nation. This is where the action is. And so you have decided to be here with us at Flatbush. And we are grateful because we know that we cannot do without you. You are an integral part of what we do here at the fabulous Flatbush Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so we ask you every week, to invite your friends to come and share with us. And today is very special. It is extra special because we have the women of worth with us. We have the creme de la creme with us. We have the women of Proverbs 31 with us. We have the women of women with us. And so we are grateful that they are here to celebrate with us on this their very special day. This week, we celebrate International Women's Day. And can I tell you, well, if you don't know, let me remind you. It is often said that the hands that rock the cradle rules the world. And I want to remind our women how powerful they are. I often say to the ladies, if you tell the men to wear their pants at their waist, all our men will wear their pants at their waist because they cannot do without women. Women are powerful. And we want our women to understand how powerful they are. And so we're here to celebrate with our women today as they celebrate and share with us. My joy and privilege is to extend further a warm welcome to the Women's Ministry Director, Dr. Donnett Blake. And she is leading our entourage here today. And for the women online, stay tuned. You're in for a treat today. And we're delighted that you're here with us. I would like also to let you know that next week, Sabbath, the 18th of March, March 18, will be a very special baptism out here. So we ask you in your homes, mothers and fathers, you are there, you're cognizant of the fact that it is going home time and you cannot go without the heritage that God has given to you. So we ask you to encourage those who are in your immediate space to get ready for this baptism next week, Sabbath, right here. And if you're online and you make your mind up, indicate and we will get to you because we have God's servants 
all over the world and we will find you wherever you are. Then the 25th of March will be our communion service. Let the church say amen. amen. And it's going to be a communion service with a difference. So you have to be here, invite the entire family to come and participate in this communion service on the 25th of March right here. And I just like to say to you members, those who are online and those who are here, that we normally would have had our business meeting on the final Sabbath. But because we're putting in our strategic plan so that you can know where we're going, so when we come to you in board meeting, we're, um, business meeting, we're coming to you with a plan of action that will be engaging the entire church because we will not leave anyone behind. It is total member involvement, and we want you to know, so we will be coming to you with a plan. We want to hear from you further, and so we will have that business meeting on the last Sabbath in April. Please forgive us for not having it at the end of March, but you will understand that we are coming with you with a plan, and we need a little more time. All in favor, say aye. Those who oppose, nay. The ayes have it. Thank you very much, and I know we will be working together as we make this the place of choice right here in this part of the vineyard. And so remember, just to remind you, you have heard about it earlier, that the Northeastern Conference Lay School of Evangelism emphasizing discipleship with Dr. Rose will be this afternoon. We will see how best we can, or representative could join on that initiative as we support that worthy venture. Then, before I go any further, we have some other business to do before I do my birthday celebration and anniversary. So I'm gonna invite my able and noble church clerk to come and the board met and we have a report to bring to you at this time and my church clerk will now guide the process happy sabbath church i'm going to read to you now a partial report of the officers of our church the departments will have members added to them or new departments are forming. It's not a full report, so if you didn't hear your name, don't worry, okay? We didn't move anyone out. So let me tell you what we are doing. Those who have been elected to serve will still be serving. We are filling vacant positions and we're adding some committees. Amen? Amen. Nominations, AYM Assistant Leader, Keaton Mitchell. Clerk Department, Kathy Davis Head. Assistants, Rachel Alexander, Sharifa Thompson, Shakaria Walton. Elders, Leslie Gale. Evangelism Committee, All Elders, Nautica Kush Johnson. Marcia de Mendoza, John Williams, Julie Williams. Family Life Ministries, Singles Ministry, Sharifa Thompson. Finance and Stewardship Combined Department, Garcia Campbell, David Holston, Michael James, Dennis Mitchell, Colin Moore, Lyndon Stahl, Hortons Ward. Hospitality Committee members, Michaela Bell Aaron, Rory Duncan, Joanne Gale, David Holston, Colin Moore. Membership Conservation Committee, Kathy Davis, Keen Mitchell, Shakaria Walton, Julie Williams, Dennis Mitchell. New Believers Committee, Kenrick Davis, head, Sean Gardner, Leslie Gale, Alfonso Jackson, Keen Mitchell. Public Affairs and Religious Liberty, Head John Williams. Personal Ministries, 
Head, Leslie Gale. Personal Ministry Secretary, Richard Assay. Pastoral Administrative Team, Kathy Davis, Rory Duncan, Marcel Evans, Sean Gardner, Joanne Gale, David Hoston, Colin Moore, Roxanne Nora, Ingrid Peer, and John Williams. Pastoral Visitation Team, Head, Rory Duncan. Other members, Johnny Alexander, Marcel Evans, Vera Field, Sean Gardner, Wendy Hart, Merlin Holston, Sonia Morgan, Rudy Thompson. Sabbath School Superintendent, Head, Keen Mitchell. Assistants, Robin Brathwaite, Jenny Golden Holder. Usher's Department, Josiah Bell Aaron, Michaela Bell Aaron, Carissa Davis, Rory Duncan, Marcel Evans, Lisa Heron, Christopher Morgan, Sonia Morgan, Angelique Pierre, Annabella Pierre, Yvette Rogers. Women's Ministry, Rachel Alexander, Chantel Cash, Gabrielle Evans, Valerie Gardner, Paige Morgan, Sonia Morgan, Tyler Morgan, and Ingrid Pierre. Okay. I so move that these nominations be accepted as read. Thank you very much. Is there a second to that motion? It is seconded. Any question, any comments, any observations? You can do so now. Thank you. All those who are in favor, please indicate by the raising of your right hand. Members. Thank you. Those who oppose, opposes, please raise your right hand. There is none. Thank you very much. And we look forward with eager expectancy for a buoyant, dynamic team as we work together to build a cadre of leaders that will take the mission forward. Thank you. And we have one more to be presented. Okay. We have the first reading of member transfers. Ilyasa Sanike and Sonia McFarlane Sanike from Flatbush to Shelter Rock SDA in Queens. We also have Bernadette Jackson and Jalen Roberts from Flatbush to Kingsborough Temple in Brooklyn. The second reading will be done next Sabbath. We also have a profession of faith Brother Levi Adolphus Harvey to Flatbush SCA. Thank you. We're going to invite at this time Levi Adolphus Harvey to come forward. And profession of faith, we accept members in the church three ways. One, by baptism. Two, by profession of faith, and three, by letters. Today, we have Levi Adolphus Harvey on profession of faith. Number one in the, the manual, the church manual, page 50, it says, give you the conditions on which members can come. And number one, it says, a committed Christian coming from another Christian communion who has already been baptized by immersion as practiced by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we are acting on number one. Levi happens to be my father. He was baptized by me the 14th of July 2007. 
upon returning to the United States of America, he went to a church, a Seventh-day Adventist church, that he thought was ours. He found solace there, and every time I would come, I would visit him, but I wanted him to remain where he's comfortable and worship God. He is a dedicated person, and now God has allowed it. I am here, and he's where he belongs. And so I ask you to turn around, and I have some questions for you. Having expressed your commitment to God, believing in God the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, do you still commit yourself to this teaching? Raise your hand. Thank you. Number two, do you, having accepted the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sin, and believe that through faith in the shed blood of Jesus, you are saved from sin and its penalty. Do you still embrace that belief? Thank you. Finally, do you desire by God's grace to renounce the world and the sinful ways and accept the Seventh-day Adventist Church as the remnant church of Bible prophecy and will you commit to it through your personal effort and influence, your tithe and your offering? Thank you. I now further entertain a motion that we accept him today, the 10th of March, in the year of our Lord, 2023. The 11th, thank you, of March, 2023 upon the profession of faith. Do I have such a motion? It is moved by our elder. Is there a second? Thank you. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Turn around, Father, and look on those who are here to support you and those who are online who you cannot see, the invisible members. And so today we are grateful. Take down your hand. Those who oppose, by the same raising of your hand opposes, there is none. We thank God for you. We know how committed you are to the cause of God, and we are grateful that we will continue the march to the promised land together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your son Levi, and that he has now found the place where he belongs. We pray that you will continue to strengthen him as a member of your remnant church as we march forward together in looking and for your coming because we look for a city that hath foundation whose builder and maker is God. We know that there is celebration in heaven and we look forward to the day when our faith will become a reality. Thank you for hearing and for answering and at this time we say Amen and amen. We're going to invite the other elders who are here and all just to come and greet him with elders. And Sister Kathy is going to present his certificate to him at this time.
Thank you very much. And one final thing here today is that we have some birthday celebrants. We have Mashoya, Masha, Mashai, sorry, Mashai Hallard. He celebrated his birthday on the 6th, and Tanisha on the 8th, and Greta on the 10th. Are uh, these persons here, please stand. And if, if there are others here celebrating your birthday, I invite you to stand. And for those who are online and you are celebrating your birthday, we are happy for you. We are going to sing now for you. And if you're having an anniversary today, happy anniversary. And we pray that God will continue to bless you with many more years of matrimonial bliss as you live forward to the day when Jesus Christ will come and we will be with him. Happy birthday to our celebrants. Let's go. Happy birthday to you. We're going to sing it a little faster, please. We need it with some tempo. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear celebrants. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good. that you are born the world is a better place because you're here god bless you as we continue to worship the lord in the beauty of holiness kids I can't do this all by myself I need help come on where are your friends come on where's Carissa I know you guys are kind of grown for stories now but Morning, boys and girls. Oh, you still coming? Okay, I think we're all here, right? The story that I'm going to tell you this morning, and if most of you are in like second grade, first grade, you'll hear the, the story about the girl who had a mind for math. How many of you like to do math? So I'm going to tell you reasons why you should like to do math, okay? So this little girl had the mind for math. Actually, her name is Ray Montague. So remember that name, Ray Montague, as we go on with the story. Ray Montague was born in the state of Alaska. Has any of you been to Alaska? Yeah? Cool. It's a really cool state. Not a lot like New York. But she was seven years old when her grandfather brought her to a place where she saw some ships. And she was so intrigued by the ships. She loved the ships because it was so big. And then she looked around and she saw this submarine. And she's like, submarine? Wow, a submarine. I want to build one of those. Who built those? And she started asking, but nobody was answering her. So finally, she tapped one of the men, and she's like, who built that? And he's like, engineer. And she said, when I grow up, I want to be an engineer. 
But he tapped her on her head and he said, no, 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 you can't be an engineer. Girls are not engineer, and more so. But her mother said, don't worry about that, Ray, because you can be anything you want to be. So Ray got excited about that. Her mother said, not because you're black and not because you're a girl, the world is still open to you. You can be anything you want to be. So Ray was kind of, her life was kind of pure. She wasn't worrying about anything. Although she went to a segregated school, does anybody know what that is? What's that? Yeah, back in the days, you know? Yeah. Separated by being black and white. Right, so the black and white kids went to different schools. But guess what? The white kids had a better education in their schools than the black kids. So Ray had to study harder. And so she started studying, and she started reading a lot of books, and she was good at math. But every time thing came up with her, she just catch up on things that were just coming up in her life that was giving her a little bit of trouble, you know? There was negative things being poured into her life, and so it made it look a little murky for her all the time. But one of the things we noticed is that Ray didn't sit there and try to say, okay, let me separate this out and let me take this out. Because every time she did that, what happens? The good stuff that she had in her life was coming out with the negative stuff. So she didn't worry about that. She just studied, she prayed, she did her work. She went on to college, she graduated, and she started high school. She had honors in school. It's time for college, guess what? No, 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 you can't go to engineering school because black kids are not allowed to go to engineering schools, much less girls. But she still got to go to college, so she was excited about that because now she had positive things in her life. So she had her life with a little bit of negative. She wasn't bothering about that. She started to concentrate on the positive. So she started studying and studying and doing her work. She went to business school. She graduated top of her class right, top of her class, and then she got a job of a typist. But where do you think she got the job of a typist? She got it in the Navy, and in the Navy, they build ships. So now she was in an office working with all these engineers, and she sat there every day, and she just watched what they did and learned what they did. One day, as God would have it, everybody in the office was out sick because they had the flu. Nobody was mixing with her, so she wasn't close to them. She did not get the flu. She did all their jobs. She took it to the boss, and she said, look what I've done. He was, like, amazed that she could have done all of that. And then what do you think happened? He was proud of her for the moment, but he did not treat her well. But one day, the president of the United States called the boss, and he said, I want a ship, and I want it right now. I need to have it in a few months. All the engineers are like, few months, few months? We can't do that. It needs a lot of math. We can't come up with a blueprint. We can't come up with a plan for it. Ray's like, I can do it. And they're like, no way. You can't do that. She sat down for 18 hours. 18 hours, and in the end, she came out with all the blueprints for the ship. It was beautiful. They made that ship. When it was unveiled, she wasn't allowed to go because she was a woman, a black woman, but all the white engineers went. She didn't worry about that. She just kept at it. She just not worrying about any of the negative stuff was, that was going on in her life. But soon, before long, everybody started to know the name Ray Montague, and people wanted to meet her. But when they met her, they realized that she was a black woman, she wasn't a man. But there were some people who still thought it was very famous of her, because she was the one responsible for building the first ship by computer, so people knew her name. And one day, one day, guess what happened? She got her name on a door that said, Ray Montague, engineer. Amen. And that was what she wanted. Now, if you look at this cup, by the time she poured, she didn't take all the negative things out, right? 
Because when you're taking out your negatives, you're concentrated on it so much. But when you pour in good stuff in your body, just good stuff in your mind, it become clear without you even have to worry about sitting there and taking it out. So if there's something that you want to do, but it seems so hard that you can't reach it, don't keep worrying about the negative stuff. Just concentrate on the good stuff that you can do, and you will succeed. And one day, you may not want to have your name on a door, but you'll always remember the name Montague, Ray Montague. But Jesus talks about that in the Bible, too. Who's going to read the Bible text for me? Oh, come on up. It's uh, Philippians 4, verse 8, where Jesus talks about Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lonely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Right. He admonishes us to just keep focus and keep on the positives and we'll be okay. So who would like to pray for us today that we will Stay positive and try to remember. Come on up. Dear Lord, please help us to be positive and please help us to think about the good things and please help us to have a blessed Sabbath. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up to be with me. Thanks. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. So this is our time where we get to participate in praise and worship as we sing and lift God on high. How do you believe we will lift God on high? We sing his praises because he showed us the way. From the heavens to the earth, he, he paid our price for us and he died for our sins. So the song says, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. You in our lives, I'm so glad you came to save us. Oh, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Let me say, Lord, I lift Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're I'm in. so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save. I'm so glad you came to save us. Oh, you came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show.
Lord, plant my feet on high. One more time, Lord, lift me up, Lord, lift me up, and I shall stand my table, my faith on heaven's stable land, on high. Rejoice, see pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks and sing. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice.
to those online that are viewing. This is the time of the service where we gain strength from our great creator. The servant of the Lord says in the book prayer, we are not to become overwhelmed with the thoughts of our sins and errors that we shall cease to pray. Some realize their weakness and sin and become discouraged. Satan casts his dark shadows between them and the Lord Jesus, their atoning sacrifice. And so as we come this morning, we know that God hears and he answers prayer. So if you're impressed to come forward, please do so as the praise team sings. Attitude of prayer, could we kneel? Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength we find to meet our trials here. Trusting in our Father's wise bestowment, we have no cause for worry or for fear. Great intercessor, great deliverer, the righteous one. Yes, yes. The one who said, come and let us reason together. Yes. Though our sins be as scarlet, they shall be white like snow. Though they be red like crimson, you will make them as wool. Yes. Here we are broken, bruised, battered. We have nothing to offer you, Lord, but a sin-polluted heart. And so we come in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, yes. the name that makes demons tremble. Yes. We come, loving Father, from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, yes. to lift up your mighty name. Yes. We come asking, loving Jesus, that you will look down in this congregation yes. with your eyes of fire and that you will burn sin out of our lives and that you will burn the desire to think and act contrary to your word and to your will yes. loving father we pray that you will take control of our hearts as we worship you yes. for you said we must worship you in spirit and in truth yes. and so loving father we ask that you will walk up and down every aisle every pew yes. you know every weakness you know every strength you know every inherited tendencies you know our struggles and so lord as our faces differ so our needs differ but you're the same God who said, come, and you will find rest. You're the same God who said, call on me in the day of trouble, and I will answer you. And so, loving Father, we ask that you will look on every woman, every single woman, every married woman, every broken woman, every widow. We ask, loving Father, that you will take control, and that, Lord, you will supply every need. Remember those online who are worshiping with us. Look in the chat and read their heart's motive and desire because you're a heart reader. Yes. We pray, loving Father, for Flatbush. Yes. 
You know every need, you know every struggle. We pray for the elders, we pray for our new pastor, Pastor Harvey and his family, that you'll continue to give him wisdom and guidance as you did with Moses, as you did with Samuel. And so loving Father, we pray for our speaker, Pastor Donald Blake, anoint our lips afresh. We pray that the Spirit of God will anoint her and that as she opened her mouth, you will speak words of life, words of conviction, words of hope, words of encouragement, words of correction, that you alone will get the glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask, loving Father, that you will remove every distraction, that you remove every demonic influence in the name of Jesus. And we ask, loving Father, the Spirit of God will take control of this place. We pray for our praise team. We pray for the musicians. We pray for everyone that is listening, that God, you will allow us to give you our hearts and our attention. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. It's because of the blood that we can stand here and lose all of our guilty sins. And so, loving Father, be with our young people. They are struggling, God. The struggle is real. But you said your grace is sufficient. And so give them enough grace to overcome the challenges of the enemy. We thank you, loving Father, for hearing. We thank you for answering. We thank you for caring. Remember those who are brokenhearted. Remember the Francis family. Continue, Lord, to hold Pastor Francis in the mighty hand of your righteousness and give him the strength to ensure the difficult days that will come. You promise one day there will be no more death, no more crying, for the former things would have passed away. So God, keep your children strong. And loving Father, we pray that whatever is in store for us as you see best, grant it because you know exactly what we need. We thank you for hearing and we thank you for answering. We give you all the honor, the praise and the glory in the name of the Father, the Son and the blessed Holy Spirit with thanksgiving, amen. amen. Spray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you've given to us. We thank you for supplying our needs even before we ask. And as the widow gave all that she had, help us to willingly give, whether great or small, all that we have. Not because we want a blessing, but because the work of the gospel must continue. And then there are those less fortunate than some of us. Thank you all for all your blessings and help us continue to be good stewards in Jesus name. Amen. According to the Bible in Malachi 3:10, it says, "Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith," saith the Lord of hosts. Everyone should freely and willingly and gladly bring their tithes and offerings 
into the storehouse of the Lord, because in doing so, there is a blessing. This is taken from Council of Stewardship, page 66. God has made men his stewards. The property which he had given in our hands is the means that he has provided for the spread of the gospel. To those who prove themselves faithful stewards, he will commit greater trust. Says the Lord, them that honor me, I will honor. And this is taken from 1 Samuel 2.30. God loves a cheerful giver. And when his people, with grateful hearts, bring their gifts and offerings to him, not grudgingly or of necessity, his blessings will attend them as he has promised. Here at Flatbush Seventh-day Adventist Church, there are four ways to give, which are projected on the screen. By mail, online giving, cash app, and Zelle. And there's also a fifth way, and that is coming in person and bringing a gift straight to God. Amen. scripture reading. The scripture reading will be taken from John 9, 1 to 5. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither had this man sinned, nor his parents, but, the, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. May the Lord act add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. You may be seated. Today, as we assemble for corporate worship, I'm happy to acknowledge in our midst those who came in after the welcome was extended and also to thank Dr. Lambert for being with us and also for taking care of our children. It's good to have you with us. Our speaker today is a graduate She received her educational degrees from Andrews University. She currently serves as Women's Ministry Director for the Great Northeastern Conference. She's a person who takes the light to develop, equip, and empower disciples to fulfill God's divine ordained purpose for their lives and community. Her passion is to proclaim the unchanging love of God throughout the changing world. Among the many texts that have given her courage to forge ahead 
is Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Fear not. I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I speak of the woman of God, Dr. Pastor Donnett Blake. I pray that you will say a prayer on her behalf, that as she comes, God will minister through us, through her to us. Dr. Blake, Pastor Blake, I welcome you to the pulpit here at Flatbush, where mission is our number one priority. Before she comes, the praise team, Sister Crystal, will come and will take us to heavenly places with her angelic voice, after which you will hear the woman of God listen to her as she declare the thus saith the Lord. of love. 
so unconditional I will have life eternally excellence is that name you are glorious is that name you Mercy. What a song, what a voice, what a ministry. Come on, saints of God, you've been blessed. Let's put our hands together and affirm the daughter of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for reminding us there's power in that name. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody ought to shout hallelujah today. There's power in the name of Jesus. You did not hear me. There is power in the name of Jesus. Na, 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 na. You sound like you don't believe it. I'm saying to somebody this morning that because I'm alive, I'm a living witness that there is power in the name of Jesus because I, I couldn't get myself up out of my bed. Hadn't it been for the power and the mercy? and the grace of God I wouldn't be standing here we ought to shout hallelujah to the king of kings because it's been good I'm always amazed I'm always amazed that when I attend certain gatherings whether it is maybe a great social you know, one of those um, black history social. Or maybe it's a game. Or maybe a party. I'm always amazed. Oh, we're lively, we're talking, we're shouting. But then the gathering of church. You have to say it over and over again. Somebody praise the Lord for a little sound to be heard. I'm always amazed. How is it so difficult to praise the Lord when the only reason we're alive is because of the Lord? Let me behave myself. Happy Sabbath, everybody. <laughs> praise the Lord. Pastor, thank you so much for allowing me to stand in your pulpit today. You're taking a risk with the daughter of God. Thank you so much. For allowing me to be here we want to bless the Lord for Pastor Harvey I believe this is um, you've just started here maybe a couple months or weeks oh come on put your hands together for your pastor amen we thank you so much pastor we thank you um, it's amazing because when we set up this date we did not know we would have a new pastor here and so when I heard that there was going to be a, a, a new pastor installed before March 11th I'm thinking hmm, maybe we won't be able to um, use Flatbush but I'm glad pastor that you allowed us to just take over your church today we appreciate it we appreciate it thank you so much um, also Dr. Huston thank you so much you know no, I, I appreciate um, your elder for his just amazing work uh, for the Lord. The, the, the attention to detail and the commitment to ministry. 
And I think we ought to put our hands together and affirm Dr. Holston. Thank you so much. Thank you. I was really blessed just working with you through the process of being here. And I appreciate you. I want to also acknowledge our women's ministries leader. I believe that the director is out on maternity leave. I believe that it is. Amen. Congratulations, woman of God. Congratulations to you with your little one and also our associate, our assistant director, Sister Johnson, I think it is. Uh, we are grateful to you and your ministry in Flatbush. But I also want to just take this moment to say thanks to the BSI women. That's you. You can put your hands together. Amen. Brooklyn, Staten Island, Women's Ministries, under the leadership of the able Sister Lystra Harry. Sister Harry, won't you stand for a moment? I know you are here already. Just stand. Uh, stand. Come on, put your hands together and just bless the Lord for her. Um, you know, in, in ministry, um, it is a wonderful thing when you find women who will stand together. Um, in the work of the Lord, and especially being a leader in women's ministries, you want to know that the folks that are working with you are trustworthy, are dependable, you know, they know what they're doing. I'm telling you, I, she knows what she's doing more than I do, and I just want you to know, Sister Harry, thank you for your leadership, and for all the women, all the women who have come today, uh, just to sit down together and to worship the Lord, especially our women's ministries coordinator in the different churches of Brooklyn, Staten Island. If you are a women's ministries coordinator in one of our churches, won't you just stand quickly? Just stand quickly. Come on, just quickly stand. You are one of the women's ministries leaders um, in your church, wherever you are. Come on, stand, stand, stand. Gina, you're trying to figure out who is the leader, who is the leader. I see, I see MES over there trying to figure out who is the leader. But thank you so much. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you for the hard work that you do and the service you give to the women in Northeastern Conference. It is a powerful thing to be able to be part the ministry, Mike, don't go, don't go on me, don't go on me. It's a powerful thing to be part of the ministry uh, uh, of women who move things along, who touch lives. Because oftentimes we tend to think that women's ministries is just about and maybe a book club here, having a... a, 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 a uh, t a prayer breakfast there or a retreat here and there. But women's ministries is so much more than that. Amen, somebody? It is really reaching out and touching lives and uh, uh, being effective and relevant in the lives of women and girls in our churches and in our communities, yea, even in our workplaces. Amen? And so we want to make women's ministries what it ought to be, powerful for the cause of Jesus Christ. It's perfect purpose is to ensure that we empower women, we equip women and girls to use or to develop and to use their talents and their gifts to serve the master. We are not on earth forever. We were built for eternity. We are here on the master's business. And so ministry is about the master's business. Amen. So I want to encourage every woman to ensure that we get involved in women's ministries. Amen, amen. I'm grateful for my associate here with us. I see Sister Kathy. You know, Sister Kathy is one of our workers at the conference office. She is the admin assistant for the youth ministries. And I'm always just loving Kathy's attitude in the office. You know, you walk in the office and you see Kathy, there's always a smile on her face. I just want to say, hey, Kathy, God bless you. I didn't know Flatbush was your church, but now I know. Amen, amen, amen. I know the time is gone, and so I'm going to jump right in it. I know there are some ladies who came from other churches uh, just to be here with us. Uh, Sister, uh, Sister Denise Lawrence, amen. Um, I see you're sitting with a friend. Amen. Pastor, I know you said there's baptism next week. Pastor, I want you to look right behind you. There are two ladies right behind you. Amen. I say nothing more. Won't you bow your heads with me? Father, we thank you. 
for the opportunity to stand here, to be here. God, I recognize that in this moment, I cannot do what is needed to be done. I plead with you, O oh God, to speak through me to us. I'm praying, Jesus, Jesus, I know we come and we, we've come for a word and we go through the motions, God, of just preaching and hearing a sermon. I'm pleading with your majesty, let this day be different. I'm begging God that you'll move me out of place and stand where you ought to stand. Let your people hear your voice. Let them see the glory of God in this place. Majesty, I'm appealing to you today because the moment is so serious. A moment packed with eternal consequence. There is somebody who needs to be delivered, who needs to be changed, and you are alone have the power to reach somebody's heart so in the name of Jesus father I pray that you will set me aside just know that I'm only an instrument in your hand move in this place by your power move in a way that only God can move and speak as you ought to speak so that souls can move at the sound of your voice oh majesty speak through me today May the power of darkness be broken and the name of our God be exalted. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I read a story a few years ago about a group of missionaries known as the One Way Missionaries. They are known for that because the story says they purchased they purchased one-way tickets to the mission field. And instead of packing their earthly belongings in suitcases, they packed their few things in coffins. As they sailed out of port, they waved goodbye to everyone they loved and everything they knew. You see, they knew that they would never return home. Because every missionary who went before them were killed by those they went to minister to. But they did not fear for their lives. Because they count not their lives something to be valued above the purpose for which they exist the mission of God. And the story goes on to say for 35 years, one of these missionaries lived and ministered among a vicious tribe, a tribe who had killed many missionaries before. And when he died, members of their tribe buried him in the middle of their village and inscribed the words on his, these words on his tombstone. When he came, there was no light. When he left, there was no darkness. And as I read the story, I, I wondered to myself, what made folks or people you know, do something like that. They, they, they know that their work for God would cost them their lives. What drives people to be so sold out for the cause of God? What is it that makes people surrender all? I mean, they give up their money, their time, 
surrendered their dreams, even relationships, all their possessions, everything for the work of God. And as I process this, the Lord laid something in my spirit. It is this one word called purpose. This seven letter word of purpose, it simply means the reason for which something or someone exists. That's it. Take for example, a phone charger. A charger, a phone charger exists to serve a purpose. And that purpose is to? It's to charge a phone. The phone charger, it's to charge a phone. And the phone exists also for one purpose. And that is to keep in connection with folks, whatever way you do keep in connection. Am I correct? Genesis 1.21 tells me that God, when he created man, he made man in his own likeness. And I recognize that since God does nothing without purpose, I have to conclude then that man was made for a purpose. Does that make sense? The problem with mankind or with us is that we actually make purpose about ourselves. So we're always on a quest to find out what is our purpose. You know, a purpose about our dreams and our plans and our goals, our desires, our pursuits, our relationship. What is our purpose? People ask the question all the time, what is your purpose? <laughs> we spend days in pursuit of things that have literally no eternal value because we're trying to live up to our purpose. But I've come to realize that purpose or the reality is purpose or the purpose for which we exist is not, is, 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 is not about us. Are you with me? Purpose is not about us. Does that make sense? I, I'm talking to our women's ministries, coordinators, our, our leaders. Amen, somebody? So, so let's go back to the charger for a moment. It does not, the phone charger does not exist to serve itself. The phone charger exists For the owner of the phone to charge the phone. Because a dead phone would mean nothing or worth nothing to somebody. Are you with me? So the charger was created for someone to charge the phone. The phone also does not exist for itself. I mean, the phone can pick up itself and make a call. <laughs> I get on social media. It does not exist for the purpose of itself. Are you with me today, somebody? The phone exists so that someone can use it. Are you hearing me today? So I'm thinking then that purpose is more about who than what. So purpose is not about what. What is my purpose? Who is? my purpose it is who needs the charger to charge a phone it is who needs the phone it's not what are you with me today purpose then is not for the benefit of the object created but for the who are you with me today it is not so much about wh uh, uh, what is my purpose, but who is my purpose. Who do I exist for? Who do I exist to serve? Who is my purpose? You know, the problem in church today is that we kind of get beside ourselves thinking that we are, uh, or the church is obligated to us. So the church has to beg us to live out our purpose.
When I read Isaiah chapter 43, 7, the Bible clearly tells me that we were made for the glory of God. That is our purpose, saints of God. As women who lead and women who touch lives, we need to know that we do not do what we do in order for, to just fill a position in a church. It is not to occupy a space. We were created for the glory of God. My purpose is who? My purpose is not about me, what I can get out of something. My purpose is about Jesus. Are you listening to me? We were made. I created you for my glory. That's a text. And so as I process how to move through this morning, the text that comes to mind as I think about who and a purpose and so on and so forth, one of the texts that really gives me some, some great insight into this thing called purpose and the purpose for existence is found in Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, and I'm going to read verses 22 through 24. And the Bible said in Acts chapter 20, beginning at verse 22 and now compelled by the spirit I am going to Jerusalem this is Paul speaking not knowing what will happen to me there I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me I'm amazed at this text I'm blown by the text then he goes on in verse 24 however I consider my life worth nothing to me my only aim, I could use the word purpose right there. My only purpose is to finish the race and complete the task. The Lord Jesus has given me the task of testifying to the good news of the grace of God. I'm going to read verse 24 again. I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only purpose is to finish the race and complete the work that God has given to me. You see, the work is testifying of the good news of the grace of God. So as you look into the narrative, you can almost hear this deep conviction of necessity. I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only purpose is to finish the work that God has given to me. In the previous verses, if you were to read the entire chapter, you will learn that Paul is somehow making a trip to Jerusalem. Paul understands that there is a mission in Jerusalem. Jerusalem had become corrupt. Are you hearing me today? Jerusalem had become mad sinful. Paul is going there to preach and proclaim the gospel of Jesus and he wanted to get there before Pentecost. As a matter of fact, on his way to Jerusalem, he made a stop and he did not stop in the immediate vicinity of Ephesus. The Bible said he went a little bit further out of Ephesus because if he knew, he knew that if he stopped in Ephesus, they would delay him and because he was in a hurry to get to Jerusalem because he's got a mission in Jerusalem. The Bible said he paused outside of Jerusalem in a little city called Miletus. And he summoned the elders from Ephesus to come and meet with him. And he met with them and he spoke to them about his ministry. As he spoke to them, he knew that his return, that, that, that his return to Jerusalem, his trip to Jerusalem would culminate in his imprisonment and uh, persecution. He didn't know what would happen, but the spirit had warned him that if he go to Jerusalem, there was a plot laid against his life. Instead of changing his plans to go someplace else, Paul is still rushing head on into danger because he's got a mission. There's a purpose to be fulfilled. So instead of changing his plans, he calmly and confidently declared, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, but I take my life to be of no account. Jesus. Woo! As dear unto myself. In other words, in other words, the call of duty was more powerful than the prophecy of danger. It, it didn't matter to him that the Spirit of God says, your life will be 
in danger if you get to Jerusalem. You said the call of duty, the purpose for which he exists was more powerful than the danger that lies ahead. It didn't matter to him if they would imprison him. It didn't matter to him if they would kill him. As long as he gets to live out his purpose for which he exists. Now, you read the text and you might say, well, maybe Paul didn't really value life. No, but I believe that like most people, Paul placed a very high value on life. He had the same love for life like other people do. You could hear him in Philippians chapter 1, 24, when he said it was better for the church in speaking to, to the, is the saints. It is better for the church uh, uh, for me f to live. So, so to die would not be the best thing for the church. Why? Because I've got a purpose to fulfill. So it's better to live so the church could benefit from the mission that God has given to me. He was not one of those who treat life as though it was a thing to be thrown away. He valued life, but he soberly declared that he did not regard his life more precious than accomplishing the purpose for which he exists. I'm talking about purpose. Life itself was worth less than the fulfillment of the purpose for which God created him. I'm trying to help somebody today. Did I just say life itself for the apostle was worth less than the fulfillment of the purpose for which God has entrusted to him? You say living was not what mattered to Paul. You see, what mattered most of all to Paul was carrying out the purpose for which God created him. That's what mattered most to Paul. And I wonder what mattered most to you today. What is the thing that matters most to you? Is it the work of God? Is it to carry out the purpose of God? What it is that drives you to get up out of bed and make it through another day? What is it that moves you to live on to another day what is it that you live forward to and look forward to accomplishing in your life is it the work of God or is it your work mm. life was not what mattered most to the apostle carrying on or carrying out the purpose for which God created him was what mattered most and if fulfilling that purpose meant death, then so be it. That's living life with purpose. Life is never well lived, someone says, when it is lived or when it is valued dearer than its purpose. Life is never well lived when it is valued dearer than its purpose. So Paul, his thoughts were not about himself. He was not concerned about his comfort. That's the problem with the church folks now. His own life was not the all-consuming and overriding preoccupation of his thoughts. It didn't matter if people talk about him or didn't talk about him or treat him well or didn't treat him well. None of that mattered to Paul, whether you want to slander him or not. What mattered to Paul was that he was going to complete the purpose for which God has created him for. His sense of duty was so intense and so fervent, it could not be diminished by considerations of his own personal safety. The dominant purpose of this dauntless apostle was not merely living, but living out his life with purpose. Or living out his purpose. The purpose for which God made him. That's why you hear him saying in Philippians chapter 3, uh, verses 7 through 10, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yes, indeed, yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. I count them as rubbish, Jesus, that I may gain Christ and be found in Christ, not having my own righteousness, 
but which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and being conformed to his death. Paul is simply saying that everything I own in life and all my education and everything about me, I count them as garbage and rubbish because all I need is to have Jesus and to fulfill the purpose for which Jesus has created me. You see, we look at it in the opposite direction. We count everything in this life as great and the things of God as foolishness. And that's why most of our time is literally spent acquiring the things of this world, whether education and that's all good, whether material possession and that's all right. I want to be rich too. But, 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 but our time is spent, majority of our days spent, majority of our time is spent on acquiring things that are going to burn. And just to give God some time, we find it difficult. Just to serve the Lord, we find it difficult. Leaders in position do nothing with their position. Just occupying space. Are you listening to me? God is going to hold us accountable. There are lives at stake. There's a gospel to be preached. And God is depending on us. I count all things as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness but that which is through faith in Christ. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. This is basic Christianity. <laughs> to live restless, restless and resistless in our devotion to the purpose for which we exist. It is not left to us to decide whether <laughs> or for what purpose we exist or whether what purpose it may be. It is not left to us to decide for what purpose we exist. Purpose is not a what, but who. Who is our purpose? That purpose is the deliberate. When, when, when the, the, the person who made the, 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 the iPhone or any phone, they, they make the phone, but they realize that the phone or the user of the phone will need to charge the phone. In the mind of the creator of the charger or the phone, are you with me? It was made with an intention, a deliberate person. It is the creator of the object that determine what the purpose of the thing created will be used for. Am I making sense? So purpose then is the deliberate intention of the creator. They don't just create stuff just for creating it without knowing what it is going to be used for. There is a purpose that is formed in the mind of the creator and then the thing is created to suit or to meet or to fulfill that purpose. Are we together today? So the mere fact that the Bible tells us that we were created in the likeness of Jesus, the mere fact that we were created means that there is a purpose for every one of us to fulfill. Are you with me? And purpose is not about us. Hallelujah, somebody. What then is that purpose? I said it before. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 43 that we were made, or the Lord said, 
says, I created you for my glory. God made us to bring glory to him. And we best bring glory to God when we work for the master. Are you hearing me, somebody? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, you must do all to who? God's glory. Are you listening to me? So my life is about God's glory. What I eat is about God's glory. I know some people will say it doesn't matter what you eat. The Bible says whatsoever you eat, what you eat or what you drink, whatsoever you do, the Bible says you do it for the glory of God because we do not exist for our own purpose. We exist for the purpose of God. Therefore, my life is about Jesus. So whatever I do is about Jesus. Whatever I eat is about Jesus. What I do in church is about Jesus. What I do in my job is about Jesus. What I do at home is about Jesus. Whatever. You do. I know there are those of us who separate church life <laughs> from any other life. And we're good on Sabbath. And we pack everything into the Sabbath. All the meetings. Because you have no time in the week. Mm. I'm not in a church. Let me behave myself. I'm not pastor in a church. It's not my church, pastor. Let me be of myself. We pack everything on Sabbath because we've got no time in the week. Because mm? we've got to look after ourselves. We've got to pay attention to ourselves. Mm? 24 hours in a day. Sometimes not even a little few minutes in prayer because it's all about ourselves. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you following me, saints of God? There is this mistaken idea that Christians have an option when it comes to service in the church. We have the idea that as Christians, we can attend, and I'm talking to those online. Are you listening to me online right now? Because since COVID, you know, by the way, by the way, I just realized this week that this was three years to the date that I stood in this pulpit. Just before church closed in 2020, um, um, 2020, I think the date was March 14th, 2020, that I spoke here. Yeah. So this day is three days, three years to the exact date. And the members were here. But now they're home because they're afraid of COVID. Even they go to work every day. We have this idea that as Christians, we can attend church when it's convenient. Give a few dollars for offering if we feel like it. I'm talking to leaders. If all I have is one dollar, I give it. But my Lord, to go into my purse and have a 20, a 10, and one, and take out one and give to God. What is that? Can I, can I just preach? Can I just, just, that's not in my sermon. I don't know why I bring that up. Why do we think, I'm talking to leaders now, why do we think that we must give God the least of everything? The least of money, the least of time, the least of this, the, le the least? That's what God has become? The least of all things? So we have this idea. I don't know. I think we've become programmed. Maybe the church has, has taught it well to us. And we have learned the lesson well. 
That we can attend a church when it's convenient and, 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 and give just, you know, our little dollars here and there you know, when we feel like it. And, 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 and we spend most of the week working, making enough money, making enough money to pay the bills and to buy. I like nice things and I like to buy nice things, you know. But I've come to realize it cannot compete with God. It should not. Are you listening to me? But, but when we have this idea, that we give God the less of everything, right? So we spend all week working, I'm trying to make enough money, and that's all right. I work too so I can make money to pay the bills because the Bible says you don't work, you shouldn't eat. Have mercy, somebody. So we need to work, all right? So listen, so we spend all week trying to make that old money to pay the bills, and we buy stuff, and we want to live a comfortable life, and that's good. I want that too. And so with our business, the schedule, we don't have time for church work. And if by chance we can spare a little time, we may choose to volunteer in some office in the church as long as it's convenient. And no one gets on my nerve. We have fallen into this way of thinking that the church is looking for volunteers to serve Jesus. So we get this idea and we believe it that ministry is optional. <laughs> so then if it's optional and we're looking for volunteers, then I can choose to volunteer or choose not to. Mm -hmm. I can choose to serve. I choose not to. The problem with that is I can then choose to quit when I want. You know what I'm saying? And then here, here is the thing. Here's the thing that troubles me. That sometimes we serve not because we really want to do it, but because we feel forced can you imagine people feel forced to serve Jesus, to work for Jesus in the church? Christians feel forced to work in the church for Jesus, to prepare sinners to meet a God who is coming back again. So we take these positions because we feel forced. Because no one else, have you ever worked on a nominating committee? I've been there. No one else wanted it. So we beg somebody to take it. They don't really want to do it. And so they can't wait for the year to end to give it up. And then there are those who take the office and we complain from the beginning of January to the end of December. About the work that we have to do. As though the work of eternity is a burden. As though the work of God is an interruption to our worldly pursuits. We take these positions and some of us, absolutely nothing. Zero zip. <laughs> we just occupy the position because it may give us status. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not, I just want to talk today to the leaders. I'm just talking to women's ministries leaders. This is about the women's ministries leaders and coordinators. <laughs> we take these positions. Doing nothing, zip, zero, nada. Because we tell somebody that I'm a so-and-so of so-and-so church. But what have you done with your position? And then when we do do something, those who benefit are the people in our immediate circles. Nothing for the wider audience. Nothing for the community. We're stuck on ourselves. I've come to realize that church members, we are the most selfish set of people. Always spending the money on ourselves. Nothing for the community. And if the pastor want to do evangelism, well, I don't know how he's going to get the money to do that. Every dollar is supposed to be about evangelism. We 
have get into ourselves, maintaining ourselves with our programs and our plans and all our stuff, and not one soul has been baptized out of our programs. You know what is frightening? I realize, Elder Kathy, I realize that it is becoming more and more difficult to find members who would willingly or heartedly work for God. It has come to the point that if you're not paying some people to fit in some ministry, they ain't doing nothing for God. You can't get people to come sing unless you're paying them. What is this? Just to do a Zoom presentation, Pastor, is a $500 fee these days. I'm just talking to the women's ministries leaders, okay? The church. I gotta pay you to come sing one song? <laughs> purpose. I'm talking about purpose. She stands with purpose. That's our theme for 2020, she stands. Purpose? Who is a purpose? It is God. Why do I need to pay you to come do the purpose for which you were created? Have you, have you, have you, have you, have you really noticed, have you noticed, have you noticed that when the subject of spiritual gifts is mentioned in, in, in scripture, that the word each or every is used? Have you ever noticed that? You never noticed that, right? But, but watch this, watch this. First Corinthians chapter 12, 7, talked about the gifts, right? But to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. <laughs> Romans 12, 6, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us. Then, then, then you go to Ephesians chapter 4, 7, but to each one of us is given, our grace was given according to the measure of God's gift. It's each one. It means that every Christian has a responsibility to God and as leaders, those who take these positions to say we are going to lead, we must lead knowing that there's a purpose to be fulfilled and that purpose is not about what? It's not about the church. It is about God. That's why Paul says it don't matter what they do to me in Jerusalem. I've got a purpose there is a purpose for which we exist there's a purpose to our existence the Bible tells us clearly that purpose is to bring glory to God and we bring glory to God as he works through us and through us for the good of humanity, for the good of the church, for the good of the advancement of his kingdom. Paul understood this well. That's why throughout his letters you'll always hear Paul describing himself as a slave or a servant of God. He expects that he's going to suffer greatly yet nothing will stop him from fulfilling his purpose for which God created him he knew going to Jerusalem he was going to suffer he knew that he might be imprisoned the spirit told him yet He knew. 
It was not like one of his friends told him, Elder. It was the spirit of the living God who told him, you are going to suffer if you go to Jerusalem. But Paul valued Jesus above earthly comfort and even above his own life that he was willing to face death for the cause of Jesus Christ. It didn't matter what was going to happen to him. It didn't matter who was going to imprison him. It didn't matter who was going to slander him. It didn't matter who was going to criticize him. What mattered was Jesus. He valued Jesus above everything else, even his own life. He was willing to lay down for Jesus. But my question is, what, 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 what are you willing to die for? Leaders and women of God, understand me this morning, today, that as women, God has created us for a specific purpose. You have been gifted uniquely. He has given you the talents you need that are vital to the purpose for which he created you for. Are you hearing me? To stand back and to say because they didn't support you, you ain't going to do it. Stop it. Your support does not rest in man. Your support is in the power of the living God who has assigned you to the position. And if you ain't going to do nothing, step out and step back and back up and let somebody who is serious about God carry forward the work of God. God is placed to where you are for a specific purpose. You are not an accident. You are the deliberate creation of a great and almighty God. Understand that you are special. The problem is sometimes we think other people are more important than us. Well, baby girl, I'm telling you right now, you ain't more important than me, and I ain't going to make myself think that you are more important than me. I know my worth. I know that I'm worth the life of God. Are you listening to me? So you don't determine my worth. It is the blood of Jesus alone that determines that worth. Are you listening to me today? And because of who I am in Jesus, I have a right to be where I am. Because Jesus placed me there. <laughs> you are special. Stop making other people tell you otherwise and stop telling yourself otherwise. Stop living below your value and your worth. Know that you are worthwhile. Are you listening to me? The Bible declares it. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Nobody is like you. you unique and powerful and special because of the God you serve. Are you listening to me? I've come to realize, folks, that you've got nothing over me. Why? Because God alone's got something over me. Are you listening to me? I am wrapped up in Jesus, tangled up in Jesus. It is Jesus alone who determines my existence. You don't determine my existence. Don't let anybody else determine your existence. And if God determines your existence, then he has determined your purpose. Don't let anybody else determine your purpose. Understand that you've been made with a purpose in mind. So don't waste your life living for something you're not willing to die for. Or something that is not worth dying for. Stop living your life 
for something that is not worth dying for. You waste your life living for stuff that ain't worth dying for. Are you listening to me? Jesus alone is worth dying for. And as we lead, we ought to lead with that in mind. That I serve from this purpose. That I'll be willing to die for the purpose for which I serve. Are you listening to me? For which I was created to, uh, uh, to do. The purpose for which God created me. I am willing to die completing that purpose. Because Jesus is worthy to die for. Know your purpose. And live your purpose. You are a mi woman's ministries coordinator. Know why you are in the position. Don't take the position just to occupy space. Do something. Understand. That when you live your purpose, understand that. There will always be those, there will always be those. I know, I know, I know, I know we have this thing in our head that nobody's supposed to talk about us. Well, I need somebody to talk about me. When you live your purpose, somebody's going to try to cut you down. Somebody's going to talk about you. Somebody's going to criticize you. Somebody's not going to support your ministry. That's just life, saints. But that's what makes it powerful. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm afraid when everybody support me. It means I'm a people a pleaser. <laughs> there will always be those. Who reject your leadership because of your gender. That's a different sermon for a different time. But you cannot quit. You cannot walk away. You cannot give up. Because somebody said something about you. Or somebody didn't do something. Or you heard somebody said something. Stop it. Your purpose is not to pay attention to what people say about you or did up to you. Your purpose is to look to God and fulfill the purpose of which he created you. Understand, understand that the success of your ministry is not based on people's treatment of you, but on the God who called you into existence and purposed you for such a time as this. Understand that your fall or your success, your rise and your fall, your failure or your success is dependent on on the choices you make not on what people do people can't stop God from blessing you are you listening to me people cannot stop God's movement in your life if you're willing to work for God then God will move heaven and hell in order to work for you and to work through you to accomplish great things for his purpose you were made for God's glory Listen, listen to me. There, 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 there. The time in which we live, the time in which we live, ladies, a mad serious. Paul, Paul, Paul says, I, I must go to Jerusalem. He, he's hush, rushing to get to Jerusalem. Can I tell somebody that we too have a Jerusalem to get to? We've got a Jerusalem to get to. Whether the Jerusalem is your church or your community, your home or your workplace. Can I tell somebody that there is a work to be done in Jerusalem? You see, we live in a very significant and critical time in our history. And the powers of darkness are raging against the moral fabric of our nation. When you look at the news, you will see the urgency of the hour. Something about the news these days catch my attention and move me to see the urgency of the time in which we live. For all around the earth, violence has increased. And yes, can I be a little specific this morning? Violence increased, have increased against women and, and children. The number of women and children being trafficked in the dark on the belly of the sex industry is growing at an alarming rate. Our children are taking their own lives because they see 
see nothing uh, to live for. Are you kidding me? A woman uh, are committing suicide because uh, they see no hope. Uh, they see no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, they come to our churches uh, and they sit right beside us. Uh, they sit in our pews. Uh, they sit in our churches. And as leaders, uh, we pay no attention uh, to the women who are hurting. Uh, we look at those who are flourishing uh, and we do not give heed uh, to those who are broken. Uh, we give no attention uh, to those who need help. Uh, we help those who do not need help. Uh, are you listening to me? Women's ministries, uh, leaders, we ought to be paying attention to those who need us most we have a Jerusalem to get to we need to stop focusing on ourselves begin to see stories and the pain and the hurt of the women who are there in our church yes in our church in our community we need to get to them we need to rush to Jerusalem we need to reach all that we can we need to give people something to live for we must give them Jesus all we've got is Jesus I may not have money like Peter I may say silver gold I don't have but as such as I have I give you in the name of Jesus get up out of your mess get up out of your situation get up and walk in newness of life I may not have the resources but I've got Jesus this is the purpose of women's ministries this is it it's more than a tea talk it's more than a retreat. It's more than a book club. Are you listening to me? It's about reaching souls for the kingdom of God. We've got to stop allowing our ministries to focus on us entertaining ourselves. The purpose of women's ministries is to inspire women, to equip women and girls, to empower our sisters and our daughters, to give support and to disciple women and girls to live in God's purpose for their lives, to prepare them for eternity. Women's ministries is about reaching souls for the kingdom of God. This was the purpose of Jesus. This was the purpose of Jesus. When no one else lift up women, Jesus was surrounded by women because Jesus understood that women were created for a purpose. Women are special. Are you with me? We were made for a purpose. We serve a purpose. Our ministry is not just something else on the books. Listen to me. The sun serves a purpose. The moon cannot do what the sun is supposed to do. And the moon cannot do what the sun is supposed to do. The fish serves a purpose. The fish can't do what the bird is supposed to do. Are you listening to me? Women's ministry serve a purpose. No other ministry can serve the purpose that a woman's ministry in a church can serve. Are you hearing me today? We need to understand our purpose as a ministry, as women of God, and live out that purpose, carry out that purpose as leaders carry out the purpose with passion with compassion with mercy and with grace remember that women's ministry is about women not some people are you listening to me it's about women and girls not my friends not those who support me listen as I end when Christ came to earth, even Christ came for a specific purpose. Jesus himself came 
for a purpose. Are you hearing me? Even at a very young age, according to Luke chapter 249, Jesus, when his parents found him on the steps of the temple, he told his parents, you're looking for me? Don't you know that I am about my father's? No, actually, it says, I must be about my father's business. Like Paul, this was a deep conviction of necessity. I must be. There's no if or maybe. I must be. This is the purpose of which I exist. You're looking for me to go home with you. I must be about my father's business. This is the reason. This is the purpose for my coming to the earth. I must be about my father's business. What was his father's business? The purpose for which he came. What was that purpose? His purpose was to shed his blood that he might redeem lost humanity. Are you listening to me? Watch this also. Jesus himself says he must go to Jerusalem according to Luke chapter 9 51 the Bible said when the days drew near for him to be taken up he set his face to go where to Jerusalem I would like to think that Jerusalem here is symbolic for me right now of the state of a messed up world a messed up community Jerusalem is a place where people are dying and need to be delivered and be rescued we must go to Jerusalem we must find people where they are they won't come to us we must go to them are you listening to me Paul would risk his life to go to Jerusalem Jesus took the journey to Jerusalem in order to die for lost sinners we must be willing to go to our Jerusalem in order to save lost humanity even at the expense of our lives and our comfort there's a purpose There's a purpose to our existence. There's a purpose to our existence. We serve a purpose. We need to stop being bench warmers, women. All of us, whether you are a leader or not, we need to stop coming to church, uh, sitting down, taking up precious space uh, and precious time. Get the sermon, go home and do nothing. That's madness and God is going to hold each of us uh, accountable because to each of us, God has given us gifts uh, to use, to be used for the building up of the church. Uh, and when we do not do our, our part, uh, when we do not live up to our purpose, the church suffers. Are you listening to me? woman man the time is gone boy I can't talk listen to me I'm gonna end I'm done I'm finished you know the greatest problem we have as women is that we talk about each other too much Ooh, that's true. Critical, critical. we cut each other down you see I tell folks you know when I started in pastoral ministry, men were not my greatest problem. Women were. The greatest oppositions and the greatest slandering came from women. Because I'm not sure why we think that in order to feel good about ourselves, we need to cut somebody else down and walk over them. Girl, let me tell you, my greatest success is lifting you up. Help us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I want to appeal to us as women, as leaders, women's ministries coordinators, Within this conference, I want to appeal to you. And I want to appeal to the women in general. Let us learn how we can support each other. We can work together. We can strive together. We can move together. We can build each other up. We can hold up. Hold up the hand of our pastor. Are you listening to me? I realize, I realize if I were to ask the men to stand, they would be like sprinkles in the midst of the sand. 
Because it always seems that women are more in number than men in our church. Can you imagine if we were to be united as one for the one great purpose of God? Standing with our pastor, holding together with our leaders, moving ministry. Could you imagine the power we could be? We would be a force to be reckoned with. The devil would see us coming and run. Say, hey, I'm running. We have a power because we've been made for a purpose. By the grace of God, I encourage the women of the church to support our women's ministries uh, coordinators. Support your leader. Stand with, and call them out when they don't do right. But don't call them out if you're not supporting them. But together, we are powerful. So I want to ask the women of Northeastern Conference today. First, I'm going to ask all the coordinators, all our women's ministries leaders to stand with me. I'm going to ask you to stand. They come from different churches, but they serve Brooklyn, Staten Island. And I'm going to ask all the women, whether you are from Brooklyn, Staten Island, or whichever area in Northeastern you are, I want you to do something for us today. If you're making a decision today that you are going to support the women's ministry of Northeastern Conference, our leaders, if you are saying today, Pastor, I want to stand in support of these women to help them move ministry forward, to tear down strongholds, and to go up against the host of darkness for the cause of Jesus Christ. If you're saying today, I want to stand with our leaders, won't you stand? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. You're standing in support. Stand to your feet. Now when they call on you, you are standing. When they call on you, don't say no. Do what you can to support the ministry to win souls for Jesus. I know there's somebody in here, you're still standing, there's somebody in here who have never been baptized or maybe you have been and you've wandered away. I want to give you this moment because you've heard today that you were made with a purpose and for a purpose. God created you for a purpose. You want to say, God, I've not been living up to my purpose, but today... I'm saying just have your way with me. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand wherever you are. Just lift your hand up. Just lift your hand up. Never been baptized. Or maybe you have baptized and you have wandered away. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Keep your hand raised. I see those. I, I, need, I need somebody to get those names for me. Elder Kathy, could you just grab those names for me? Because I want to make a call to you. I want to give you a call. Come on, praise team. Come on. Come on, sing something for me. Pastor, I'm going to ask you to pray for us, uh, uh, to, to do the prayer of appeal for me. Uh, I, I know, I know there are others. There are two hands right there. Is there another? Just raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. Get somebody. Yeah, could, come on, come on. There, there they are. There they are. Just, just grab those names for me because I need to make a call. I need to talk with you today because at the end of the day, my duty, my hope, my purpose is to ensure that together we make it into God kingdom is there another I see two hands there's a hand at the back there's a hand at the back I see a young girl at the back is there a hand at the back just keep your hand raised do you have that name yeah 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 Jesus calls the little children Jesus was only 12 when he was on the the steps of the temple uh, speaking to lawyers and doctors uh, even the children must come on to Jesus uh, is there another is there another is there another I've got some here I've got in the back uh, is there another you have not yet been baptized or maybe you have 
have been baptized, but you have wandered away. You've not been living for Jesus. And today you want to say, God, I know you made me for a purpose. I've been reminded that I'm here for a purpose and I want that purpose to be fulfilled. I lift my hand to you, Jesus, today. Where are you? Is there another hand? Is there another hand? Is there another hand? Is there somebody else? I know there may still, still be somebody here who needs to say, Jesus, I, I want to make my calling and election sure. Is there another hand? Is somebody out here? Is there still someone out there? Just lift your hand. Just raise that hand today. Is there somebody else? Pastor's getting ready to pray. Is there somebody else? Pastor. Thank you very much. We're going to be praying now. Invite the rest of the congregation to stand. I know that there are those online who have heard the word today and in the comfort within the comfort of your home when every other voice is hushed in silence we wait before God the silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God Brothers, you are needed to. The woman was made from the man and the man was born from the woman. So we need each other. You need to make that decision to wherever you are online, indicate in the chat. God has spoken through his servant and she has extended the call to accept Jesus as Lord. Today he's calling. Will you listen? Will you heed the call? Our heads are bowed. Eternal God, our everlasting Father, It is to you we come in the closing moments of this service. We thank you for the word you sent to us. Thank you, Lord. A word not soothing to the air. but powerful for the transformation of all lives. We thank you for your daughter, whom you have called and equipped, who availed ourselves today so that you could have ministered to us through her. We have heard your voice your word was clear. And somehow, even now, your Holy Spirit who has brought conviction to our hearts is still nudging somebody, somebody who needs to surrender unreservedly to you could be a daughter who has wandered away but through the instrumentality of your servant you have echoed the call to return we ask Lord that you will through your spirit grant that daughter the courage of her conviction that she will not look on the crowd but she will press to touch the hem of your garment knowing that there is healing in Jesus there is forgiveness in Jesus there is pardon in Jesus there is life 
in Jesus. We seek life today. Thank you that he who comes to you, the person who comes to you, you will in no wise cast away, but you will receive gladly. Thank you for what you have done is doing even now. Thank you for those who raise their hands, indicating their love for you, their desire to fulfill your purpose. That is to bring glory to you with their lives and to be of service to their fellow men. We thank you for men. O oh Lord, we pray that our women need our men. Our men need our women. Help us not to be compartmentalized, but to support each other. Because together, we are going to make it in the kingdom. For in Jesus, there is no Greek, nor Gentiles male nor female we're one in you thank you Jesus for reminding us today of the force of duty we are called we are commissioned and we are equipped for mission there are those who need to make that decision to be baptized because if we're going to enter the Jerusalem we can't go on our own terms and conditions we have to go through Jesus the way the truth and the life so we ask that you will grant them the strength to make that decision to go all the way with Jesus we thank you for those who have made their minds up next week sabbath will be a baptism out here lord prepare your people we pray today you're calling tomorrow you are coming help us to be ready lord we pray again for the women that you will strengthen them in their ministry and as they receive direction from the director we pray that together there will be a powerful army breaking down the stronghold of the enemy and building up your kingdom thank you for what you have done in this place today and for those who have joined us online and we look forward to the day when our faith will become a reality hasten that day we pray for we ask all these blessings in the powerful name of Jesus and let God's people say amen and amen praise the Lord Remain standing as we sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Everyone, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descend. in our life. After the service and the benediction, food is prepared for all. So join us in the fellowship hall. Let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you for the call for duty and the message you have given us and the purpose we have, we will follow you. Dismiss us from this place, but not from your presence. Help us to be lighthouse for you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.